I am Dr. Ramakrishna Prasad. I am a US board certified family medicine specialist and an HIV AIDS uh, and viral hepatitis specialist. I serve as the executive director of PCMH Restore Health on Double Road, Bangalore. So this is three questions in one and I'll answer them one after the other. The first question, what is high risk exposure? <clears throat> Any exposure wherein there is a reasonably high possibility of HIV transmission from an infected individual to a person at risk of infection is called a high risk exposure. Some examples of this are, <clears throat> say for example someone has unprotected sex with an unknown partner. Say someone has unprotected sex with a commercial sex worker. Say someone has uh, unprotected sex with a partner uh, he or she solicits on the internet. These are all examples where um, the, the likelihood that, uh, that one of the partners is HIV infected and um, because, the, the ex because the sexual act was unprotected, there's a chance of transmission. <clears throat> Other forms of high-risk exposures are someone who has multiple sexual partners that increases the risks of HIV transmission. Other forms of uh, high-risk exposures are for example injection needle use and sharing of these needles. One other form of high-risk sexual uh, high-risk exposure is working in the clinical setting that is working in a hospital or a place where uh, someone, someone could be infected <coughs> And if one is exposed to that through a needle stick injury uh, or a splash of blood in one's eyes or other mucous membranes, all these constitute high risk exposures. The thing you have to keep in mind is that this is not just about HIV. It could be HIV, it could also be about hepatitis B, hepatitis C or syphilis and a few other conditions where uh, the exposed individual is at risk. I hope that answers the first question. The second question about the window period. The window period refers to that period after an exposure when infection has happened but a test is unable to detect and classically the antibody test or the ELISA is unable to detect the fact that infection has, has uh, already occurred. <clears throat> In the past with a third generation ELISA tests this period used to be as long as three months. Today, with the availability of PCR tests, it can be as short as 15 days. The fourth generation antigen antibody test, um, uh, the window period associated with that is typically less than a month. Um, I hope that answers the question. Um, and with regards to the third question as to whether the window period can be extended, uh, <clears throat> Under all circumstances, no matter what test you use, as long as the test you use is a reliable test from a reliable lab, uh, if the exposure happened more than three months back and your tests are negative, you can be assured that your uh, HIV status is negative. Thank you. <laughs>